Welcome to the inaugural episode of Wide Open Wednesday, news from around the world and beyond. In a story that never received much attention in local mainstream media, Nathaniel Taylor, the actor best known as Rollo Lawson, the street-smart best friend of the son of the 1970s sitcom Sanford and Son, has died. Taylor died Wednesday, February 27, 2019, at the Ronald Reagan UCLA Medical Center in Los Angeles after a heart attack. Nathaniel Taylor was 80 years old. Taylor's character, Rollo, was the sidekick to Lamont Sanford, played by actor Damon Wilson, and often drew the skepticism of TV patriarch Fred Sanford, who thought Rollo was a bad influence on Lamont because he'd spent time in jail. I didn't know you came out in the daytime. <laughs> oh, oh, listen, uh... I don't have a picture of myself. You think I'm gonna need one? Hey, man, I hope not, because I ain't got a picture of myself either. Mm. Well, Rollo, why don't you go down to the post office and take one of your pictures down? <laughs> yeah, dude, not joke is a joke. But why do you always treat me like a criminal when I come over here, Mr. Saf? Because I want you to feel at home. <laughs> <laughs> Say, my man, what are you doing? Hey, Rollo, what's happening, man? Look here, I'm gonna ask you a question. Uh... <laughs> Does that look like wild parsley to you? You mean that marijuana? <laughs> Say, look at baby, it's just about ready to be harvested, too. Yeah, well, just stay away from it, Rollo. Hey, man, don't worry, it's enough for everybody. Rollo, just stay away from it, now. Now get in the house. Don't smile, get on in there, brother. Please don't smile. <laughs> I saw your old man and Bubba going into the gay blade. Come on, Rollo. What kind of joke is this, man? It ain't funny. Hey, man, I swear. I swear on a stack of Bibles. It's high, Lamont. The two old dudes are going in the gay blade. Can you get ready for that? <laughs> look, man, just because you saw him going in the gay blade, now, that, that don't mean nothing. Look, my father's always looking for weird places to go into. Now, he goes in there and sits at the bar and nurses a can of beer for a few hours. Then he comes on home and tells me about the whole thing. It don't mean nothing. Hey, they won at the bar. <laughs> well, where were they? They was tucked away in a corner. <laughs> well, they probably just wanted to get a better view of the place, that's all. And they was wearing dark glasses. Hey, look, Rollo, you talking about my old man now. Hey, baby, look, I'm just telling you what I saw. <laughs> The fast-talking but good-hearted Rollo, dressed in colorful suits and hats, and called Fred, played by actor and comedian Red Fox, Pops. Taylor went on to act in other shows and movies, later opening a performing arts studio for young actors. But his son said Taylor never tired of people recognizing him as Rollo. It was a time and an era. Just to be on TV as a black man, it was an honor, said his son, Kydie Taylor who works in the television and film industry behind the scenes. It was an honor for people to remember him. Nathaniel Taylor also played roles on shows such as The Red Fox Show, Police Story, and What's Happening, and black exploitation films such as Dynamite and Trouble Man. He reprised his role as Rollo in the 1980s spinoff Sanford. Hip-hop music promoter Alonzo Lonzo Williams one of Taylor's longtime friends said the actor was a mentor to many. 
He was always there with a wise word and a kind word and a joke to put a little icing on it, Williams said. Taylor is survived by his wife, Loretta, four daughters, and three sons. In a more urgent news story, also not reported by our local mainstream media, a widely used healthcare prediction algorithm is biased against black people. The new study found that a type of software program that determines who gets access to high-risk healthcare management programs routinely lets healthier whites into the programs ahead of blacks who are less healthy. From predicting who will be a repeat offender to who's the best candidate for a job, computer algorithms are now making complex decisions in lieu of humans. But increasingly, Many of these algorithms are being found to replicate the same racial, socioeconomic, or gender-based biases they were built to overcome. This racial bias extends to software widely used in the healthcare industry, potentially affecting access to care for millions of Americans. According to the new study by researchers at the University of California, Berkeley, the University of Chicago Booth School of Business, and Partners Healthcare in Boston, the new study, published October 25, 2019, in the journal Science, found that a type of software program that determines who gets access to high-risk healthcare management programs routinely lets healthier whites into the programs ahead of blacks who are less healthy. Fixing this bias in the algorithm could more than double the number of black patients automatically admitted to these programs, the study revealed. For 43,539 white patients, and 6,079 black patients enrolled in the hospital, the researchers obtained the algorithm predicted risk score and compared it to more direct measures of a patient's health, including the number of chronic illnesses and other biomarkers. They found that for a given risk score, blacks had significantly poorer health than their white counterparts. Instead of being trained to find the sickest in a physiological sense, these algorithms ended up being trained to find the sickest in the sense of those whom we spend the most money on, and there are systematic racial differences in healthcare in who we spend money on. If you would like more details on this blatant racism, let us know and we will send you the documentation. Please visit the source links for in-depth details. This is Wide Open Wednesday, news from around the world and beyond. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Click the notification bell so you will be notified when we upload new videos. Find The Awakening Frequency on Twitter and Instagram and also Facebook. Again, researching is key. Always do your own research and never just listen to what people tell you. We are The Awakening Frequency. Out of the millions of potential subscribers, we just want to reach one so each one can teach one. Peace.